Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the playing of the national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. I am Airman First Class Faulkner, and I will be the narrators for today's ceremony. On behalf of the commander, the 60th Maintenance Group, Colonel David Hammerschmidt, and the men and women of the 60th Maintenance Squadron, welcome to today's official change of command ceremony, in which the reins of responsibility and leadership will pass from Colonel Robert Corsi to Major Parawi May Uwe Jitteru. As you will notice, today's ceremony will be uniquely executed, as it is vital that we continue to fight the COVID-19 virus by maintaining social distancing. This situation has and will continue to present us with challenges that we will overcome. The change of command ceremony is rooted in military history, dating back to the 18th century. At that time, organizational flags were developed with color arrangements and symbols unique to each particular unit. The flag served as a rallying point and reminder of their allegiance to their leader during battle. To this flag and trust, when a change of command took place, the, the flag was passed to the individual assuming command in presence of the entire unit. All unit members could witness their new leader assume the responsibility and trust associated with the position of commander. He or she, who this symbolic tradition has survived, he or she who has possessed the flag also held the unit's members' allegiance. This symbolic tradition has survived throughout military history. Our goal today is to continue the change of command tradition while recognizing the constraints of the unprecedented times we are currently in. At this time, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce the official party. The presiding officer, Colonel David Hennemann-Schmidt. The outgoing commander, Lieutenant Colonel Robert Corsi, accompanied by his spouse, Lieutenant Colonel Kelly Smith, and children, Tyler and Kayla, unable to attend today but watching via our online stream, his daughter, Audrey. <laughs> the incoming commander, Major Parawi May Uwevijitaru, accompanied by her spouse, Rashad Bain. We are also privileged to have with us today several distinguished guests. The commander, 60th Air Mobility Wing, Colonel Jeffrey Nelson and his spouse, Courtney. The command chief, 60th Air Mobility Wing, Chief Master Sergeant Derek Crowder and his spouse, Tia. The deputy commander, 60th Maintenance Group, Lieutenant Colonel Clinton Vardy. The Superintendent of the 60th Maintenance Group, Chief Master Sergeant Jeffrey Clark. The Commander, 349th Maintenance Group, Colonel Aaron Cook. 
We would also like to extend a warm greeting to all members of the 60th Maintenance Squadron and members of Team Travis here and watching today's virtual ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, the presiding officer, Colonel Hammerschmidt. Thank you for the warm welcome, uh, everyone. This is uh, this is obviously unprecedented, a little bit uh, a little bit different than what we're used to. So I appreciate everybody's patience with us, uh, understanding. And uh, despite some of the changes in the process and 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 the change of command ceremony that we've grown accustomed to and used to. Um, we're still going to try to do justice to these two incredible officers and provide the dignity to this ceremony that it absolutely deserves to maintain these traditions as best we can. So um, I typically like to go through these by going through a few themes, but uh, before I do, I, I do want to say thank you to all the people that we are able to get on out here. And it's nice to see uh, a gathering of some familiar faces that we haven't had the opportunity to do so in quite some time. So. Colonel Nelson, Ms. Courtney, thank you very much for attending today and taking some time to be with us and sharing this ceremony. Chief Crowder, Tia, it is wonderful seeing you both again. Thank you for coming and taking some time to attend this ceremony. Aaron, thank you for being here, representing the reserves and coming on out and being part of this ceremony with us. Um, so I, I'll typically go into these change of commands to try to hold the attention of the audience how, however large or, or small it may be. Uh, this being a smaller audience, hopefully I'll be able to hold your attention throughout this time, but um, trying to keep with some themes, and some of them are familiar. Um, we've affectionately referred to uh, this shop, the MXS, over the past couple years as Grandpa's Garage. And uh, I'll try to keep that theme alive in there. Um, I'll try to equate what they do in a relatable fashion to that of a hospital visit. And the third theme I'll try to wrap up with is uh, in line with our 60th AMW motto of no bounds. So first of all, welcome to the largest MXS in Air Mobility Command. Consists of 321 enlisted personnel, 71 civilians, and seven officers. And if we add the reserve footprint to that, it includes another 59 reserve enlisted and another officer, bringing the total to 559 personnel that call the 60th MXS home. Consists of eight flights supporting 15, 58 aircraft, including C5, C17s, and KC10s, valued at just over $9 billion, and 13 different AFSCs. So what makes the MXS a little bit unique and the way we refer to the way we like to refer to it a little bit as grandpa's garage is because it tends to be this magical place that uh, if you think back to when you were a child um, that maybe you could bring something to that location and, and maybe it was busted and maybe you thought it was on its last leg and you're probably going to throw it away because it's not, it's not useful anymore. It doesn't work. But on just a slim chance, you bring it into the garage. You bring it into your father or grandpa's garage or whatever in hopes that they might be able to fix it so you can use it again. And maybe it's something as simple as a broken wheel on a wagon or something like that. And if you bring it into that location, magically, you just hope to get it fixed so you could use it again. But when you'd bring it into that spot, grandpa, or in this case, the technicians in this location would emerge with that wagon and it would be better than it was when it was new. Maybe there's a new beefier set of tires on it. Maybe the structure was beefed up a little bit on it. But not only was it returned to you in good working condition, but in many times, it was returned to you better than the original condition you brought it in there. This magic happens each and every day in the 60th MXS. 
And thinking, trying to relate back to this story as, as a kid, if you, if you brought it in, it was never your intention to getting it back better than you brought it in there. Again, you just wanted it fixed. But the fact that it was returned to you better than its original condition makes that item then somehow receive, take on the form of a, it being a gift. And it becomes a gift because of the pride in worksmanship and craftsmanship, the passion to improve what was yesterday to make it better tomorrow, and the professionalism and the skills of the technicians to actually be able to pull it off, no matter what condition the part was handed to them. Rob has sown the seeds of this pride, passion, and professionalism into every single corner of the 60th MXS. I submit to you that the MXS is Grandpa's workshop of the maintenance complex. And the three AMXSs, the aircraft generation squadrons, they all bring their broken toys in with the, expect with the expectation that they'll get fixed. And they'll get fixed quickly because they need to put them in the lineup and get them in the air. And in this case, each one of those squadrons believe that their toy, their broken part, their broken piece is the most important one and should absolutely be fixed first and before the other three. But uh, Grandpa's experience tells us that it's worthwhile to measure twice and cut once and make sure that we put that right quality product out the very first time. And over the past two years, Rob and his team has been exceptional at man making this magic happen and maximizing the capability for all three weapon systems, the C5s, the 10s, and the 17. As evidenced by the fact that Travis is able to boast the number one tanker performance metrics, not just in the KC-10 fleet, but across all, all tankers across AMC. The number one C-17 performance metrics across all C-17 units across AMC and leads quality metrics in 31 of 48 measured areas for the 5, the 10, and the 17 communities. But these are not the only three organizations that the 60th MXS supports. There are multiple organizations that depend on the 60th MXS to fix their toys on behalf of DOD. There's actually 247 DOD organizations across California, Nevada, and Oregon that depend on the expertise within the eight flights of the 60th MXS, which includes calibration of over 13,000 pieces of test equipment, measurement, and diagnostic equipment. The flights I'm alluding to include fabrication, sheet metal and corrosion, aero repair, aerospace ground equipment, precision measuring and evaluation equipment lab, wheel and tire, munitions, hydraulic shop, and fuel cell. The customer bases range from aircraft parts, repair, munitions, to assisting NASA with the world's largest heat shield for the Orion, Orion space capsule and the James Webb telescope, to helping design and build medical impact device to aid in traumatic brain injury research that's been lauded by the Air Force Surgeon General. Along the theme of the Surgeon General, it's very much like a hospital visit for our aircraft whenever they come to the 60th MXS. Fabrication flight. This is where we fix the broken bones on the aircraft, the structure on the aircraft. We build a mold or a cast or we splint a leg. In our case, we use doublers on sheet metal to beef them up and across ribs and spars. Uh, the medical community will insert rods and pins, will use doublers. These men and women in fab flight are artists because each and every one of these repairs is tailor-made to fit the shape and contour of every aircraft in bolt pattern that has gone through decades of expansion and contraction as it's been flying around the world. Sheet metal and corrosion. If there's a puncture in the skin of the aircraft, we clean it, we prep the area, we patch it, and we paint it. 
This is like taking the infection in an aircraft and removing it. MXS has leveraged a laser paint remover over the past couple of years to, to cut prep time in half and reduce the waste stream that used to be captured in gallons down to ounces. This is significant because that waste stream consists of chrome six, which is uh, significant in causing cancer. Aero repair, this is our crash damage disabled aircraft recovery program. These are your chiropractors, if you will. If the body of the aircraft isn't aligned properly, then the moving parts of it won't travel properly. And this is where we rig and align those parts to make sure they function smoothly and the way they're expected to. Aerospace ground equipment. They're responsible for all of the equipment on the flight line and in the hangars. This is our life support equipment, if you will. They provide electric power to the aircraft, liquid oxygen, gaseous oxygen, liquid nitrogen, and they also provide the unique maintenance platforms that we have to use to get our technicians into the nukes and crannies of the aircraft. Wheel and tire shop. As much as our aircraft are flying around the world, they'll wear out those tires very quick. And when you need a new set of kicks, Wheel and Tire Shop's got them ready to go and ready to deliver on multiple different aircraft to include the Takamo aircraft across the ramp. Hydraulic Shop. Hydraulics provides the muscle and the blood for the aircraft. It's hydraulic pressure that moves our flight control surfaces, opens and closes doors, and raises and lowers gears, in addition to the KC-10 boom. On the munition side, I don't know if the hospital ever blows anything up as part of a, a repair in somebody or fixing them or a remedy, but our munitions flight manages 52 munitions accounts with 100% accuracy on over 1,700 items valued at $13 million and remain top performers whenever they're inspected year after year after year. Our non-destructive inspection section, this is like your x-ray and your MRI lab. This is the wing, they also have the largest weight, hazardous waste stream account at Travis Air Force Base and they manage it impeccably. It's consistently inspected by government, state, federal, regulatory uh, commissions, and constantly they are the benchmark with 17 straight years of flawless results. The third theme is that of no bounds. A unique part of this, this garage here and this squadron is that Rob and his team are not stuck in the old ways of doing business. They are the foundation of what they do, and that foundation is rooted in both physics and math, and that will not change. But the tools and the way in which Rob has led his team to approach age-old problems by leveraging new tools and technology truly demonstrates the pursuit and exercise of our No Bounds motto at the 60th AMW. They've been able to seek approval for, garner, and energize the first field-level 3D polymer printer that's been used on the C5, the C17, and to man manufacture YouTube parts. They're leveraging incredibly innovative technologies that they're testing on behalf of the Air Force and other field level units. A metal arc sprayer is used to add metal back to strengthen metal and reverse the effects of corrosion and extend the life of support equipment. They have a feral arm scanner that uses IR to explore size, shape, and dimensions of objects and items to export to an AutoCAD program to allow reverse engineering and manufacture of parts. And Rob has also set the stage for a metal 3D printer, the first of its kind to be put into a field location. During these times that we're still going through right now, the idea of no bounds has permeated the workforce so much that when they understood that the medical community was in need of and short supplies, their minds quickly went to work and they went to manufacturing using their water jet cutter 400 face shield protectors and holders that we are able to provide to David Grant Medical Center as just one more indicator 
of the intellectual energy Rob has instilled in his personnel towards finding new solutions to age-old problems. Rob, at times, can present himself as a little bit of a gruff, outward exterior, and he will talk very straight and plainly to you. You know he is speaking the truth, but he has a heart of gold, he loves his family completely, and he has a passion for our profession and the people that make up the 60th MXS. Shortly here, Rob will be handing over a command, and not long after that, he'll be retiring. Rob, it's been a lot of fun. It's been an honor having the opportunity to serve with you again, and I cannot express my respect for you as an officer, leader, or a man enough other than simply by saying thank you. So with that, leads me to my next officer here. And we're blessed with riches at Travis Air Force Base. We, attack, we attract talent from all over the globe. And we're blessed with riches with Major May. She's a perfect example of the pedigree of officer that we're blessed with here at Travis. Looking back through her OPRs in August of 09, first OPR with the 736 Aircraft Maintenance Squadron at Dover, Delaware our C-5 counterparts on the East Coast. She was the assistant AMU OIC with the C-17s at that time. Initial comments on that very first OPR, self-starter, energized, eager, and talented. And as demonstrated by her recognition as the outstanding academic performer at Airspace and Basic Course. Didn't take her long because the first year out of the gates, she was the MXS company grade officer of the year at Dover. In 2010, she was quickly pulled up to the maintenance group executive officer. She'd basically been on the, on the patch for one year and was pulled up to be the exec. She quickly rose to a stratification of number two of 10 lieutenants. And her hallmark is pure performance with leadership skills ahead of her peers. In 2011, she was the OIC of Transient Alert at Dover. She was charged with an enormous responsibility for leading the group winner, O-Plan, where she had to prep 12 teams and 16 de-icers, and did so successfully, and was able to move over 2,000 transient missions, and was named the group company grade officer of the quarter, number one of 22, and selected as a women junior symposium representative and highlighted as a superb leader and again, performance beyond peers. In 2012, she was moved over to the 373rd Training Detachment as a detachment commander in charge of 33 folks, seven AFSCs and a curriculum of C5s and C4, C5s and C17s, instructing 115 different courses and pushing through over 500 maintainers through that. Again, number one of four lieutenants. In 2012, she was competitively selected to attend the Defense Language Institute in Monterey, California, focused in on Japanese. She graduated with a 3.8 GPA and was highlighted as truly exceptional officer. In 2013, she again moved to be an aircraft maintenance instructor, only this time it was a part of the Military Personnel Exchange Program in Hamahatsu, Japan, as a bilingual instructor for three advanced maintenance courses and one logistics course for pilots. There, her performance was highlighted as an outstanding leader, an innovative diplomat and instructor, and drove huge, huge partner nation impact. This, I'll remind you, as a young captain. In 2014, try to dust off my, my Japanese here. She was Ichiban of 19 instructors. Those of you that don't know, Ichiban is number one, if I'm saying that correctly. Ichiban of 19 instructors. Ichiban of five CGOs in the Asia, Asia Pacific Military Personnel Exchange Program. Epitomized US Air Force qualities and core values. 
In 2015, Ichiban of eight captains. In 2016, she was moved out of Japan and up to Beale, California here, just up the road, as part of the 9th Maintenance Squadron. There she was a maintenance operations officer in charge of over 30 U-2s, 11 T-38s, and 15 RQ-4s. Also 300 people there, world-class maintenance leader, and again, Ichiban of four CGOs. In 2017, she flew up, still as a captain, to assume maintenance commander responsibilities. An 05 billet, a Lieutenant Colonel billet as a captain. She filled that role for six weeks and was again Ichiban of 17 CGOs. In 2018, she was dual hatted as the AMXS OPSO and the MXO OIC. Ichiban of number of four maintenance officers. At that time in 2018, I was trying to pull May over here to Travis Air Force Base. Actually, May and Rashad, trying to get both of you over here sooner. Because uh, I realized you had a big commute on your hand and I needed some FGOs rolling in here. I wasn't successful in doing that. Beale kept their claws in you for a little while, but in 2019, I was successful in finally pulling you over here where she's fulfilled the role of the C-5 OPSO in one of our very demanding squadrons. She's generated 608 missions, moving 43 million pounds of cargo, which has led to the Secretary of Defense Field Level Maintenance Award. And again, Ichiban of five ops officers in the maintenance group and the Wing FGO of the year. May to you and Rashad, I look forward to your leadership, your energy, and your command of the men and women as 60th AMXS, and we're blessed to have you. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel Hammerschmidt. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as the Meritorious Service Medal will be awarded to Lieutenant Colonel Corsi. Publish the orders. Attention to orders. This is to certify that the President of the United States of America authorized by Executive Order 16th January 1969, has awarded the Meritorious Service Medal, 4th Oak Leaf Cluster, to Lieutenant Colonel Robert T. Corsi for Meritorious Service, 30th June 2018 to 31st August 2020. Lieutenant Colonel Robert T. Corsi distinguished himself in the performance of Meritorious Service to the United States as Commander, 60th Maintenance Squadron, 60th Maintenance Group, 60th Air Mobility Wing, Travis Air Force Base, California. During this period, Colonel Corsi led his team of 550 airmen in the execution of heavy maintenance operations for Air Mobility Command's quintessential air power projection platform. An innovative leader, he championed the command's first base level additive manufacturing capability by implementing three-dimensional printing, redirecting already cutting edge technology to create personal protective equipment for medical responders during the COVID-19 global pandemic response. Additionally, Colonel Corsi elevated the wing's readiness posture by driving 31 of 48 Air Force level maintenance metrics best, directly resulting in rapid global mobility capability for Hurricane Dorian relief, the first ever North Korean summit support, four military sales movements, multiple NASA rocket payloads, and thousands of airlift and air refueling missions around the globe. Finally, Colonel Corsi's leadership was pivotal to his group's second consecutive air mobility command Daily Leon Trophy in 2018 and propelled his airmen to win the 2018 Air Force Maintenance Effectiveness Award and to compete as a DOD Field Level Maintenance Award nominee for two consecutive years. The singularly distinctive accomplishments of Colonel Corsi culminate a long and distinguished career in the service of his country and reflect great credit upon himself and the United States Air Force.
Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the outgoing commander, Lieutenant Colonel Corsi. <laughs> Sir, I don't know if uh, the reference to Grandpa's garage was a reference to uh, <laughs> me being probably one of the oldest squadron commanders in the history of uh, the Air Force. But. You can interpret it however you want. <laughs> Good morning, and thank you for t attending today's change of command ceremony. Today's ceremony may look a little different from the ones you have seen in the past, but it still honors the tradition while ensuring the safety of all here today. Colonel Nelson and Courtney, Chief Crowder and Kia, thank you all for coming and thank you for your leadership. Thank you for allowing the squadron commanders to do just that, sir and thank you for allowing us to command. Colonel Hammerschmidt, thank you for your bold leadership and taking a chance on Kelly and me. And if Dale were here today, he would say, you know, Kelly was the first round pick and I was the one, I was one of the additional picks in the trade. Clinton and the squadron CC team, what can I say except this is probably the greatest team in the history of squadron CC teams with the exception of Nate Heyer. <laughs> Nate, if you're watching or if you're around, honestly, thank you for your friendship. And since you won't be around for the retirement ceremony, thank you for building my shadow box and for being the grumpy old guy with me. To the triad, Colonel Nelson and Chief Crowder, this is the best chief and first sergeant, period, on this base. Chief Shirt, thank you for being my wingman and wingwoman. Your sage advice and our constant banter kept me sane. To my wife, Kelly, four years of command has flown by in our nightly debriefs at the dinner table where we sought each other's advice or just listened to each other as we vented were the key to having a successful command. To my kids, Tyler, Kayla, and Audrey, I can't thank you enough for your support. You are the inspiration for everything that I do. I love you all. To the Phoenix. What can I say? This day is about you. It is about celebrating your successes, and I will try to capture the things that you have accomplished over the past two years. You are the driving, you are driving the mission from the back shops. You provide all the heavy maintenance on three distinct weapon systems, something no other squadron in the Air Force can claim. You are the reason why this MXG is number one in 31 of 48 maintenance metrics, Air Force wide. You have supported over 100 maintenance recovery teams, over 30 POTUS missions, multi a multitude of NASA missions delivering next generation satellite capabilities, supported the first ever North Korean summit, the World Economic Forum, and Operations Inherent Resolve and Freedom, Freedom Sentinel. You have expedited repairs that supported humanitarian efforts worldwide. worldwide. You recovered a C-5 that landed nose gear up, cleared the runway in 17 hours, and precisely repaired the aircraft and returned it to the fight. You lived up to the squadron's vision of innovate locally, prevail globally. You are on the cutting edge of technology by using GPS receivers to know precisely where age is parked, saving hundreds of hours, locating the equipment. You are using laser technology to strip paint and reducing particulates by 90%. You are using laser dense scanner that precisely measures dents and gives instant results. You can use it to scan parts and send them to a 3D printer or CNC and precisely make components for the aircraft. You are the first field level unit in the Air Force to 3D print a component to be used on an aircraft. When the COVID crisis hit, you stepped up to the challenge by preparing the reception space, delivering necessary equipment to the Department of Health and Human Services, and teaming with David Grant Medical Center to cut and print PPE for our first responders. You have prioritized equipment that required upgrade and attacked it. You capitalized on squadron innovation funds, saving time and money, streamlining processes within the shops. The CSS has taken support to the next level. You develop processes that will last. You have taken a PT program, made it the premier program in the wing, a 99 plus percent pass rate and zero non-currents for the largest squadron in the wing is no small feat. The facility managers have played a huge role in improvements to this squadron, has made 
to, the, to its infrastructure. You have spent millions upgrading facilities to meet our current requirements while keeping an eye toward our future mission set. You have ensured every resource was utilized and the turnip was sque squeezed dry. But work isn't all we did. Our quality of life programs are second to none. To our key spouses, I can't thank you enough. Nicole, Randy, Erica, Jennifer, Avon, Zinni, and Neri, your dedication and commitment to the squadron has been immeasurable. To the MXS members and their families, you are pillars in your community. You've led professional development organizations, supported the California Run for the Fallen, assisted with wildfire relief efforts, delivered Fisher House dinners, supported the Travis Heritage Center, offered Honor Guard support, supported the Gold Star Ruck March, March led neighborhood cleanups, mentored the community's youth, and so much more. To the entire MXS family, all of your successes are why you were recognized twice as the Wings Eagle Trophy winner and the re reason why you have won the Maintenance Effectiveness Award for Air Mobility Command three years in a row, you were the 2018 Air Force Maintenance Effectiveness Award winner and the 2019 and 2020 Air Force nominee for the Department of Defense Field Level Maintenance Award. I could not be any prouder. I could not be any prouder of you, and I am grateful to have had the opportunity to serve with you. May and Rashad, welcome to the squadron. The Phoenix will take care of you, and you will then they will not let you down. They are proud maintainers who will ensure the mission gets done. Take care of them because they are going to take care of you. I have one more thank you, and that's to the team that set this up and to the narrator. We've got an A1C narrating. Normally, it's a senior NCO doing this job. But Aaron Faulkner, you have stepped up to the challenge. You were the wing awards uh, ceremony narrator as well, so thank you. thank you. That is all I have, and thanks for attending today's ceremony. Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel Corsi. At this time, on behalf of the men and women of the 60th Maintenance Squadron, the Operations Officer Captain Gabriel Marcus will render a final salute to the outgoing commander. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the change of command ceremony. Attention to orders. Special Order G-20-010, dated 19th May 2020. Major Parawee May Uivijitaru is appointed Commander, 60th Maintenance Squadron, Travis Air Force Base, California, effective 21st May 2020, under authority of Air Force Instruction 51-604. On behalf of Colonel Hammerschmidt, it is my pleasure to introduce the new commander of the 60th Maintenance Squadron, Major Parawee May Uivijitaru. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Major Parawee Uivijitaru, the floor is yours. Morning. No?
my family. Rashad, Darnell and Kim, Brandon, and thank you so much for being here in person. And for those of my family who could not make it today, Mom, Dad, Charlie Raymond, Mom and George, thank you for your unyielding support. I know you're watching from the comfort of your home, and I just want to say the lessons you've taught us, both Rashad and I, and everything as far as mentorship, guidance, really do appreciate you shaping and molding us to be who we are today. Back then, I'm happy. This is for my mom, I'm sorry. All right, to my friends watching from all corners of the world, from Germany to Japan to Thailand, Hawaii, coast to coast, in CONUS, thank you for tuning in today with or without hands. Still appreciate And Sir, thank you for leaving such a wonderfully big shoes to fill, figuratively and physically. You're phenomenal. I wish you nothing but the best in your future endeavors and next chapter of your life. Really appreciate it. Colonel Hammerschmidt, sir, thank you for those kind remarks. I will try my best to live up to those expectations every day. Thank you for the opportunity to lead. And also, thank you for cutting my commute to work by 23 seconds. Now, to the centerpiece of today's ceremony. To the men and women of the 60th Minion Squad, today is about you. And from my previous conversations with my predecessor, as well as my own interactions with you in my previous position, I know I am joining phenomenally high-performing team that's very well accomplished. And I look forward for the opportunity to humbly serve you. Now, with the change of the guy on, figuratively speaking in this case, there's always a certain level of uncertainty and anxiety that comes with shifts in focus and priorities that may develop with new and to remove some of that apprehension, I want to outline the framework in which I intend to lead this organization and the focus of my tenure, as well as tell you a little bit about what to expect from me. So first and foremost, we will continue to build upon sound maintenance principles that got, to, that got us to where we are today. We will continue to perform high quality maintenance by the TO with the right tools, training, and take our time. That's the traditional four keys, those new maintenance, you'll probably recognize that. We will continue to look for ways to improve, to innovate, to make our processes more effective and efficient. So when something doesn't make sense or there's a better way of doing things, we will challenge the status quo and will continue to contribute locally and globally. Secondly, I will foster a culture of ownership and psychological safety. Head of Air Force Mentor, my first Air Force Mentor, once told me 10 years ago that ownership breeds pride and pride breeds over my years in the Air Force, through different organizations, I have found this to be true. And this team, the Phoenix family, has so much to be proud of. As you heard in all the accolades, we have accomplished a lot to this point. And I know we have high contributing members, and I want you all to come to work, look forward to it, have fun, your true authentic self and be met with respect and dignity. And that is what I mean by a culture of psychological. 
your trust. So now you know a little bit about me and what to expect. I really look forward to getting to know all of you in the months to come with a backdrop of sound maintenance principles and innovation, a culture of ownership and psychological safety. I know we can elevate this organization to an even higher height. Thank you, Major Uwe Jitterum. At this time, on behalf of the men and women of the 60th Maintenance Squadron, the Operations Officer, Captain Gabriel Marcus, will render a first salute to the new commander. Thank you, Major Uwe Jitterum. We look forward to your leadership and guidance. Please stand for the playing of the Air Force song and the departure of the official party. Give her the guns! Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our change of command ceremony. We thank you for jo joining us and hope you have a wonderful day.